So Tucker Carlson recently upset a whole bunch of conservatives because they're upset that, uh, well, he gave a very critical interview with a Palestinian pastor, um, especially about the recent and ongoing and horrific, because every day is recent and horrific, of the ongoing genocide that's happening in Gaza. The absolute unnecessary destruction of people's lives. Men, women, children being shot at, blown up in every which way. So I want to pull up this article here. This is from Newsweek, of course. And right now, there's probably a lot of people who are, especially those in the liberal establishment, who are happy for some reason that Tucker Carlson is getting turned on, uh, turned, uh, getting attacked by cons uh, by uh, conservatives. Let's go and read this. Tucker Carlson has sparked ire among several conservative commentators. And please stay tuned even after this uh, video segment because I got, I got some, I got a very interesting proposal for those who are upset with tucker carlson okay just just hear me out for that one but stay till the end of the video tucker carlson has sparked ire among conservative commentators after interviewing a palestinian pastor who discussed how the ongoing israel hamas war has affected christians in the region the latest rounds of tensions in the region was heightened after Palestinian militant group Hamas attacked southern Israel in October. Much of Gaza has since been raised in subsequent strikes from Israel, with huge numbers of the stri Strip's 2.3 million residents forced to flee from their homes, especially knowing for the fact that 1.5 million people are right now in Rafah, in which, again... Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has indicated he still wants to conduct military actions there. It's, isn't he special, right? Uh, Gaza health officials have estimated more than 33,000. That number is probably higher. Palestinians have been killed since Israel embarked on retaliatory strikes. And Israeli officials say that roughly 1,200 people were killed in the initial Hamas attacks, during which a further 253 were taken hostage. By the way, those hostages... Who knows if they're still alive since Israel was continuously doing helicopter attacks, drone attacks, aerial strikes, artillery strikes, you know, all that kind of stuff, probably burying people alive. If they really cared about the hostages, they wouldn't even done a fraction of what they did during the six months. I mean, 80 to 90 percent of Gaza's a moonscape. Who knows if those hostages are still alive? Like it's 50 50 up in the air. And, of course, the White House has become increasingly critical of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Hey, folks, let's have democracy in the chat. Do you think the White House is increasingly critical of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, or is it a show? Type 1 for Kit, you awful man. Biden is doing all he can. He's got to be pragmatic, but he's going to really tell Netanyahu in a strongly worded letter to stop. Type 2, it's all for show. It's all for show. But continuing on, uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring up this part of the uh, video here. So let's go ahead because we because we could read about how conservatives are angry because there's a lot of conservatives angry. But here, here, let's go ahead and pull this. This Medidius hit piece shows Tucker's generally well hidden hand. The Christian population in Bethlehem all but disappeared after PLL took over in 1996 due to Islamic persecution. The only Christian population in the Middle East that is growing is hold on. Let's see what she says. Let's go ahead and pull this up here because you got people who are angry. Is the Christian community in Israel? The Christian community in Gaza disappeared after Hamas took over in 2005. In 2002, the PLO ter terrorists took nuns and priests hostages in a standoff with the idea of forces in the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem. Oh my goodness. Everyone's so upset. Hold on. Let's go and pull up this one. We got another person. Josh Hammer says, Turns out Tucker needed Fox more than Fox needed Tucker. Very sad. OK. Of course, uh, Jake Shields, Tucker Carlson is actually American first. Unfortunately, all our Republicans are Israel first and Democrats are Ukraine and every third world nation first. Yeah. And you look, know, Tucker Carlson, America does not exist to protect and stand up for the citizens of other nations. Also, America doesn't really look out for its own citizens as well. So let's go ahead and bring up the video in question. Let's go ahead and bring just play a few video segments of it just to see just what upset all these conservatives against Tucker Carlson. A consistent but almost never noted theme of American foreign policy is that it is always the Christians who suffer. When there's a war abroad that the United States is funding, it is Christians who tend to die disproportionately. And this goes back a long way, 60 years really, to Vietnam, 
where Catholics in that country were massacred, but it's accelerated. So, for example, during the more than a decade the U.S. government spent occupying Iraq, the Christian, the ancient Christian community of Iraq was completely devastated. Nine out of ten of them are no longer there. They're gone. Um, that was an effect of our foreign policy, but it was almost never noted in the United States and almost never, ever even mentioned by Christian clergy in this country, many of whom supported that war and that occupation. Interesting, right? Because they want Americans to be quiet. They want them to be passive. You you can't upset them during their morning breakfast, but that's what Hardlands Media is here for. It's to get you angry, righteously angry. The whole thing about war is that you want to convince the populace that it's a good war. This is what I mean by our military industrial complex slowly losing control over the narrative. As more Americans wake up and realize the fact that we have money for unending wars, but no money for our infrastructure, we're bailing out banks and we're giving billions upon billions of dollars to Ukraine and Israel. The average U.S. citizen, no matter where you stand on the political spectrum or what generation you're part of, you do have to question and wonder, why are we in these wars? Why are we in the Middle East? Why are we in different countries on the continent of Africa? Why is it that we're doing regime change wars and sanctions in Central and South America? Why are we doing this here? Why are we doing this over there? Why are we supporting this dictator? I thought we were a republic. Should we be pro-democracy? The answer is no, because the corporations control everything, and it's bad for business. Democracy is bad for business. Why is that? Maybe because it wasn't. Virtually no one in any American church said anything when Christians were killed in Syria, very often by Islamic extremists paid for by the United States. But nobody said anything, and anyone who did was denounced as a kook or a bigot somehow. Standing up for Christians was not allowed in the U.S. media. We saw that firsthand. And so, once again, it continued. In Ukraine, where the U.S. government has sent far more than $100 billion to the Ukrainian government, and what happened? What did that government do? Well, it banned an entire Christian denomination. The Zelensky government is busy throwing Orthodox priests and nuns in jail and having the army raid churches. But again, not a word. But what about Gaza? What about the entire region in the Middle East, where, of course, there's very intense fighting going on? Many Christian churches in the United States, particularly evangelical churches, support that. But there is virtually never a word about the Christians who live there, the ancient Christian community in Gaza, the West Bank, and Israel proper. So because no one has said a word, there has been great suffering among the Christian population uh, in that region. In October, a Greek Orthodox church in the Gaza Strip was hit by an airstrike. We're showing the video now. The church is in ruins. At least 17 people were killed that day. And again, that was hardly the first time that fighting in that region killed Christians. You'll remember the church. Now, these, uh, this right here is a place of worship. This is a place in which, again, should be off limits, should be off limits theoretically. But instead, no. No. And this is something that the Biden administration knew all too well. What was happening in Gaza? They knew that the IDF was targeting. They knew that the IDF was targeting uh, men, women, and children, civilian centers, refugee centers, and all of that. Targeting hospitals and universities, colleges, all of that. Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem almost 20 years ago, where a clergyman was killed in the church with American weapons, and Christian clergy in our country said nothing. And you may be asking yourself, well, wait a second, if Christian leaders won't stand up for the lives of Christians, why have them in the first place? And that's probably a good question. So you would think that in Congress, there, where there are many self-professed Christians, somebody might be piping up on behalf of uh, their brethren in the Holy Land, but no, just the opposite, in fact. For example, at a town hall event last month, Michigan Congressman Tim Wahlberg, a former evangelical pastor, said he would like to see the region treated like Hiroshima was treated. Watch this. We shouldn't be spending a dime on humanitarian aid. I really think it should be like Nakasagi and Hiroshima. Get over quick. I've been to the museum in Hiroshima. It is something that will forever change you. It's not for the faint of heart. And I do encourage everyone that if you do have time, someday, if not today, 
we should all visit the Hiroshima Museum. It will show you the absolute devastation, the unnecessary destruction, and the fact that we have weapons now 10, 15, 100 times more powerful than the atom bombs that were dropped over Nagasaki and Hiroshima should frighten all of you. And yet we have a wonderful Republican, Tim Wahlberg, in Congress, saying it should be quick. Make it quick. This is madness and insanity. And, you know, here's something that'll keep you up at night. This guy was dumb enough to speak it out loud. Just know this, that there's probably a few other Republican lawmakers. And yes, surprise, surprise, Democrat lawmakers that think this privately. If you think I'm joking, I'm so sorry. But we're ruled by sociopaths. Please tell me, what makes these congressmen and women so honorable? They're not honorable. They're not good people. The same. I apologize. I said that the Congress people are our people. They're not. Whatever they are, they're not human. And the same should be in Ukraine. Defeat Putin quick. Instead of 80% of our funding for Ukraine being used for humanitarian purposes, it should be 80%, 100% to wipe out Russian courses. If that's what we want to do. So to be clear, as a theological matter, Christianity is not the religion of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's the religion among all world religions that uniquely abhors mass killing. In fact, it, it is the religion that abhors mass killing. There's no excuse for that from a Christian perspective. Well, hold on, Tucker. There's, <laughs> there's, there's been a lot of times... Wars have been declared in God's name in many different religions, including Christianity. There's, there might have been this thing called the Crusades. It kind of wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and here we have a former pastor calling for it. But again, how are the Christians doing in that region, in Gaza, the West Bank, and in Israel proper? We almost never hear from them. And so we thought it would be interesting and Maybe edifying to hear from one right now. Reverend Munther Ishak is the pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Christian Church in Bethlehem, and we're honored to have him join us. Uh, Father Ishak, thank you very much for coming on. Um, so let me just ask you a broad question to start. How are Christians in the Holy Land, in the three places I mentioned, West Bank, Israel proper, and Gaza, how are they doing right now? Yeah, first, thank you for having me. Uh, these are very, very difficult times, uh, and it's been difficult for quite some time now. Uh, when I say difficult times, I'm not just only referring to October 7th. Uh, and the fact that right now we are fragmented into, uh, as you explained, three territories, the West Bank, uh, Gaza, and uh, Israel proper. We can add to add East Jerusalem, which is a category in its own, uh, explain uh, one element of our situation, which is we fragmented. Uh, so in my church, I have uh, family members with relatives in Gaza, and they cannot even visit before the war. They could not visit and be with them. Um, and uh, this fragmentation uh, is, as I said, one element of, of the situation. One of the biggest problems we're facing right now is the deterioration of our number. Uh, people keep leaving because uh, of the political reality. Uh, life under uh, a very harsh Israeli military occupation is difficult. Uh, to bear, and as a result, uh, many young Palestinian Christians continue to leave, uh, for example, Bethlehem, uh, choosing to find a better and easier life uh, elsewhere. Uh, we are a small And it is understandable. I mean, if you're constantly under the jackboot of an apartheid government, you're going to do everything in your power to escape. I don't care who you are. I think we could all agree you would want to leave. And this is something that a lot of conservatives who are really die hard in supporting Israel, especially the politicians, right? Um, who want to see or have more influence of, uh, or have, is have Israel have more influence over these territories and just turn a blind eye to it. Remember a lot of these politicians are being paid to ignore this. Now you would think in theory, in theory that their faith would tell them, Hey, this is bad. After all, you know, don't, don't don't tell these Republican lawmakers and Democratic lawmakers that are very pro-Israel and some of them being Christian. Never tell them that uh, Jesus Christ was homeless. Never tell them that. 
They think he lives in a giant palace in the sky. That's not the truth at all. He was homeless. And from what I have heard from the stories, he didn't like rich people. <laughs> at least that's what I heard. That's what I heard in the streets. Community, but we're part of the Palestinian people. And as such, anything that happens uh, to Palestinian happens, uh, happens to us. Uh, and uh, we are probably... Um, disproportionately affected by all of this because of our small numbers uh, as a religious community. Uh, anything that happens impacts us severely. Uh, case in point, what's happening in Gaza right now, where there are anything between eight to, to 900 uh, Palestinian Christians, uh, and uh, any impact on that community, any death uh, in that community will have a long-lasting uh, effect. So what sort of support have you had from the Christians in the U.S. Congress? And just to frame this, and of course people know this already, but the United States government is paying for a lot of these military operations. Yeah, well, not only are we paying for it, it's, it's, it's coming out of our blood, sweat, and tears, folks. I mean, let's face it, if you, the American people, even asked for anything in the same level, of finances that Israel's getting. You're just going to get a cold shoulder and said, no, that's too expensive. Clean drinking water, too expensive. Ra railroads that are functioning and updated to modern standards, no, that's too expensive. We'll go broke. Accountability for our transportation, accountability for our, 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 our politicians, no, that's no, no, we can't have that. No, we can't have that at all. Oh, wait, no roads with no potholes in it? Come on, you, you, you got to learn how to stunt drive. Perhaps you're a secret NASCAR driver in waiting. See, Israel's getting all that money. The American people are being left behind. See, the idea of assuming that these politicians care is a fool's notion. These politicians don't care at all. They care about getting money. They care about expanding their portfolio and many of these Republican and Democratic lawmakers, some of whom who are Christian conservatives, uh, need to realize, or is that what we need to realize, is that when you hear them speak about their faith and values, that should be a huge alarm. There should be a huge alarm bell ringing in your head. Don't take these people seriously, these politicians who talk about faith, because they can be easily bought. They don't care about war crimes happening in, in Gaza. They don't. And this is a majority Christian country. So um, have any members of Congress sent you aid of any kind, words of support, a fellow Christian? Um, we've always had a problem with American foreign policy when it comes to Palestine, Israel, and the Middle East in general. I've traveled to D.C. in December to advocate uh, for a ceasefire. I don't think war solves anything. And uh, no, I mean, uh, on the opposite, we continue to be horrified. Uh, by what we hear from Congress, with, of course, some exceptions. There are some uh, in the Democratic side. Of course, Rashida Tlaib uh, comes from a Palestinian heritage. But uh, when you look at the so-called religious right, we uh, receive no, no sympathy whatsoever. Uh, sometimes we just please to be, plead to be heard and to have our perspective taken uh, seriously. Uh, and one of the things I'm often struck with, whether when I speak to diplomats, uh, politicians, Congress staff, or even pastors and influential pastors, is how little they know about the reality on the ground. And uh, their knowledge of the uh, situation here seems to be very, very shallow, yet they hold very strong opinions. And oftentimes these opinions are shaped by a uh, political party's position, uh, the United States position, and not really based on, uh, uh, you know, an, a learned uh, uh, opinion that's based on facts, on being here, visiting, talking, investigating, and uh, knowing the facts. Um, and see what this guy, he's speaking the truth, but the problem is what he needs, uh, what, what everyone needs to realize is that these politicians, they don't care about facts. They care about money. They worship money. Uh, I'm seeing a few people in here. Shout out to uh, Mr. Day in the Park. APAC won't like this guy. Uh, if if you're critical of APAC, period, they're not going to like you. And I've been seeing more people even commenting here in the live stream chat that they that these politicians they only worship money, they only worship power. Miss Witchy, perfect. Rich people don't care. 
and uh, of course, haha, they worship the they worship money. The god is money, and hold on, all powerful, all knowing, just can't handle money. And bad cookies does write a very good comment here. How do you vote this out when you have such a sick system? Voting is uh, <sighs> the problem. Is you 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 have the next click copy paste version of a politician waiting? How do you vote this out? This is where citizen ballot initiatives come in. This is where mutual aid groups come in. This is where we have to come in. You you can't rely on the standard politicians. But now I want to play another portion of this video. The video in question that really really upset a lot of conservatives, especially those within the Republican establishment and those who are Republican commentators. See, vote blue no matter who. I can be critical of Republican lawmakers, but don't worry. There's also Christian conservative Democrats, too, that are siding with their Republican colleagues because they don't like Tucker Carlson for many other reasons, too. Let's go ahead and pull up this video here for all of us to enjoy and see. Blowing up churches and killing Christians. I, I think you've lost the thread it, it just to, to end on this if you had a message for christian leaders in the united states whether in government or in churches or just citizens who care about the religion and their fellow christians what would it be it would be to remind them that when the state of israel was created it was not created on an empty land it was created on a land that had uh, millions of indigenous palestinians there including palestinian christians and that that state they support uh, that state they celebrated as a fulfillment of prophecy and the sign of God's state to the Jewish people for it to become a state. Uh, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians, including Palestinian Christians, uh, were forced to leave and have never returned. Uh, churches were closed. A friend of mine did the research and counted more than 30 churches that were closed when Israel was created because Palestinians uh, were expelled from uh, the land. Our numbers continue to be in decline. Uh, so we're pleading that uh, uh, come and listen, come and talk to us. And my message to Christian leaders right now is there is a very, very brutal war taking place in Gaza, a war that I described using the word genocide, because it's a war that has used even starvation as a mean. And fellow Christians are suffering because of that war. Uh, it's time that uh, Christian leaders uh, recognize that wars is not the way, whether in Iraq and Afghanistan and Libya. That's and and while these are great words that I can agree with, you got to remember a lot of these politicians who claim to be Christian, who pl who who claim to care, are in it for money. See, they're hypocrites. They'll turn a blind eye to suffering. You, you think they want to follow the words of peace and love? No, because that's bad for business. That's bad for the money. It's always about the dollars. Dare I say it, Congress is so corrupt, they make the mob. They make Al Capone. They make, every, they make the old 1950s Italian mob seem reasonable. That's how corrupt our politicians are. And yet they hide behind faith or values. And... Hey, going to even throw out the progressive Democrats here, too. A lot of these progressive Democrats, like people like AOC and Bernie Sanders, they know that this is wrong, and we hear them. We 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 hear them. We see them speaking. But are they really challenging their own party? Because Nancy, Biden, Jackie Boy Schumer, it sure took them a while to really have a change of heart in theory. But it's all a show. It's all an act. You have people like Bernie Sanders, who I played on yesterday's show, saying, oh, we need to be harsher. Not not a single dollar should go to Netanyahu. But the money's still flowing, Bernie. It's not because of Republican lawmakers. It's also because of Democratic lawmakers chipping in. These people who claim to care about social issues or hide behind faith and its ideals are liars. And many of these politicians have been in power for decades on end. I'm telling you something that all of you should already know. Unfortunately, this gentleman here, I think he needs to get a further education on the fact that our whole political system is corrupt. It's not the cross that is uh, relevant in Congress. It's the almighty dollar. I mean, when will we learn that war does not help? 
when will we take Jesus's words seriously uh, about it's not going to happen. I'm so sorry. Being peacemakers, about being merciful. Merciful. There must be uh, other ways. Uh, and so it would be an invitation to listen, to learn more, uh, and to avoid very shallow and simplistic perspectives that are not based on scripture itself, but more based on uh, political uh, equations. Uh, and I would plea right now, and I will continue to plea that we need to stop this war in Gaza. Uh, it's killing many, many children, women, innocent lives. It has to stop. There must be uh, other ways. And as a follower of Christ, uh, we have to pursue the path of peace uh, and justice. And we have to avoid simplistic uh, polarizations, good and evil. Come and listen, come and understand what's happening. And I plead as a Christian pastor from Bethlehem, I plead that you come uh, and listen. Father, thank you for your thoroughly decent and sensible analysis, and I hope it's heard by Christians throughout the West. I appreciate it. People will hear it. The politicians won't. So here's uh, my words of wisdom to many of these conservative commentators that are upset and angry with Tucker Carlson for uh, having this... Uh, pastor on a show to talk about what's happening in Gaza and what's happening in Gaza is downright criminal because uh, look you have foreign aid workers being attacked you have men women and children civilians civilian targets being blown up this has been consistent this has been continuous this is barbaric so all these politicians and pundits upset with Tucker Carlson really take a good look at yourself in the mirror. Now, obviously what you will be seeing before you, especially if you're pro Israel, you'll be seeing a person that is a okay with war crimes being committed. And I know there's some conservatives too, who believe in this idea of a prophecy that this is the end of days and that Israel must exist because that's how God will come back and, I don't know, the world's going to be okay, whatever. Listen, that's a fantasy story, okay? It's, 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 it's kind of a joke. It's, it's a horrific joke, especially those who really believe in it. So I'll give you this compromise. You can live in a fantasy world, and here's and here's how you can do it, okay? For those that want this to can who 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 really think the end of days are happening here, listen listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. There's a movie. It's called Megiddo the Omega Code 2. All right. It was made in 2001. It was a movie where the devil convinces the whole world that that to decide with him. And the United States, Mexico, and China join forces to stop them. And, and God comes in at the end with that Hail Mary and sends the devil straight to hell. If, if and, and the battle takes place in Israel too, by the way. So, so you can live out your fantasy here, okay? That's what you can do. And what you also can do, hopefully, is maybe have a heart. You know, controversial statement there because politicians don't have hearts and realize, oh, my goodness, Israel's committing war crimes. The whole international community must come together to stop this. And what a sight that would be. But sadly and unfortunately, 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 uh, we don't live in that world of reason and understanding. Bassem Yusuf is absolutely correct that Israel's going to probably get away with this because they bought off our politicians. And if you're critical of the actions that Israel is doing, it makes you a bad person. I guess Tucker Carlson having this interview, a reasonable interview, and you can uh, guys check out the full interview on his uh, Twitter, social media. Um, I would encourage all of you to watch it in its, in its full entirety. Because when you have lawmakers and people constantly twisting themselves over and over again to defend these horrific actions, you have to realize, we all have to realize, that every time they speak about faith, about their values, know this, they'll drop it 
for that shiny red penny. Not a green dollar, but for a shiny red penny. Because these politicians do not believe in anything else but money, power, and influence. And APAC bought our government. 